Okay, hi everyone and welcome to a brand new video. So in this video, we're going to discuss retrieving data from the Firebase real-time database with Python. So this will include actually getting the data and having more complex queries on this data. Now, this video is a part of a playlist of a CRUD series for Firebase real-time database with Python using Firebase. So if you're interested, you can watch the entire series. However, you may watch this video as a standalone because it does work as a standalone. So there's no issue with that. All right, so let's get started. Now here we have console.firebase.google.com. So this is where our Firebase projects are. These are, some, these are some demo projects. So I'm just going to go to Firebase real-time DB demo. So this is a project. All right, so this is the dashboard sort of for my project, and this has all the features that my project has, so all the features Firebase provides. Now we have authentication, database, storage, hosting. What we're interested in is database. Now I do have uh, tutorials concerning authentication and storage, so you may refer to those if you're interested in the different features that Firebase does provide you with. Okay, so this is my sample database that I'll be using. It's a database of users or people, and I'm just going to expand the data. And these different users have a name, a first name, a last name, um, an address, an age. Now, we don't always have an address and an age. This depends really on um, what different, what each data point has. So, you know, this is a you NoSQL know, database. So you might have different schemas for the different data points. And that's part, like, that's definitely okay. And that's very particular for Firebase. All right. So this is pretty much our database. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to work with Python to extract this data and have these different queries and um, conditions related to this data. So let's just go to PyCharm. What I have in PyCharm is a nothing. This is just a clear and empty uh, PyCharm project with only one file that I've created. So if you've seen any of the previous videos in the playlist, you will understand exactly what this is. If not, it's definitely okay because I'm just going to skim through them pretty fast so that you'll be able to understand and then just continue. Even though this isn't anything hard, it's just part of the setup. Okay, so you can go to your terminal through uh, PyCharm to install Pyrebase. So pip install Pyrebase. And then you would wait for it to be installed. Now I already have it, so requirement already satisfied, but you would, in your case, you would probably have to wait here for it to be installed. All right, so now that I have Pyrebase, I can simply import it and then begin using it. So this part right here is your configuration credentials that Firebase provides you with. So this is what you're going to be using to connect to the Firebase API and then be able to interact with this API and uh, push and retrieve data to this online cloud database. Okay, so the next part is Firebase, uh, Firebase dot initialize app Firebase configuration. So you're taking these credentials and you're using them to initialize an app that uses this database. So it's pretty like this is just what you're doing to initialize a new app and at this and you're telling it, please use this part of Firebase. Okay, and then the last part is simply specifying a variable that's going to be connected to the database part itself. Now, what you can do here, you can also have auth equal Firebase dot authentication no, uh, dot auth or storage equal Firebase dot uh, storage. Again, we're not going to be dealing with either authentication or storage. I have separate videos for those, but I'm just telling you how we can connect to the different parts of Firebase. So now we're using the database. All right, so let's just get started. So our goal is to retrieve data. All right. Now, how do we go with ret retrieving data? Well, there's a special function called the get function. Now, how we're going to perform the get function is that we're simply going to do db dot child, and then here we're gonna say users and say dot get. All right. Now, if you've seen any of the previous videos, if you're familiar with uh, pushing data with with reading with updating with deleting then you would probably know how what this db.child part is right here so what we're doing with db.child is that we're creating these sort of paths to the data so here when i said db so this is the db part dot child users that that means i'm sort of here so this is the path that i just followed 
okay? So, and I'm telling it to get all the children of db.child users. So I'm getting all the children of users, which means I'm getting, let me just collapse. I'm getting all of these, and these also have their own children. So this is sort of what I'm doing. I'm retrieving this data. Now, what happens if I print this? So let's just save it in a variable called users and then print users and run it. And now we can see that we have a pyre response object. So this pyre response object does not tell you anything about the data and that's why we need to use a special function called dot val. So I'm getting the value of this. So I simply run it. And this is what I have. So it says order dict. So this is a Python dictionary. And these are the different um, dictionary items that I have. So I, for each um, so for each ID, I have its children as values and it, so on. All right. So this is pretty much how you would go about doing things. Now, if you print users.key in this case, let's just run it. I simply get the word users. Why is that? Because users here is the key and the value is this series of all these children. All right, so it's an array of different children and the children themselves have objects within them. So which was what we printed earlier. Now you know how to use get. So get is simply for generic retrieval. And then you have to use val or key to print either the value or the key of what you just received. Now, how do you iterate over these? All you have to do is use the dot each function. So for user in users dot each. So you can perform the dot each function on a pyre response object. And from that, you will be able to access each individual child of users. So now you can print user, uh, let's print user dot val. And then we run it. And these are the different objects that we have within our database. So these are the different objects and we got the value. So let's, why don't we see the ID? Because we have, we have the key and the value. And here the key is this ID or this ID or this ID. And the value is the object within it and the, all the data inside this object. All right, so I hope that's clear. Um, you can leave questions if anything is uh, ambiguous or confusing. Okay, so let's move on. Now that we know how to sort of iterate, we can also use the key part here. Now, this would get us all the different IDs that we have. All right, so these are the IDs. Okay, so now you know how to use get. Another thing you can use is dot shallow. So shallow dot get. And in this case, if you, and in this case, you can print users dot val and run this and you would get all these different keys all right so this was a shallow uh, retrieval where we only got the keys now maybe in this case you're not interested in these keys but in some cases the key could be ha could have some useful information and you can use the dot shallow method to extract it okay so now you know how to retrieve data basically